This is Chapter 7, Lesson 2. We're now going to get into a more in-depth look at the processes of cellular respiration and dive deeper into the four major stages that we learned about briefly in the first introductory lesson of Chapter 7. So recall those four stages as glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Let's start with a deeper look at glycolysis. Now you've learned or hopefully remember that glycolysis involves the breakdown of one molecule of glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. And through glycolysis, we get a payout of two ATP. So we're going to look more closely at the process of glycolysis to get an understanding of how those, pro how those products result from the reactants. I also want to emphasize here that um, glycolysis, although we've simplified it to basically one step, it occurs in about 10 steps. Each step is catalyzed by a specific enzyme. And if you recall from our previous chapter, enzymes typically end in ASE. So as you look at these blue words here on the left, as you go down, hexokinase, aldolase, enolase. So these are all enzymes. So if anything were to happen to one of those enzymes, it could compromise the entire process of glycolysis. All right, so that's um, just kind of bringing in a concept from before and, and the importance of enzymes in bio, biochemical reactions. So let's start at the top with step one. Now you don't have to know all these steps. In fact, I really just want to focus on the, what goes in and what comes out. So one glucose in, two pyruvate out, and then the things that are in these red, yellow, and green boxes here. So just counting ATPs, notice that there's two ATPs that are in red boxes. And these show that ATP is going to come off as ADP. So there's actually two ATP that are being used in glycolysis. But if we hop down to the green, then there's later place where there's going to be two ADP consumed and two ATP produced twice. So let's take, take a look at what, what that means in terms of the second bullet point here. There are two major phases of glycolysis. There's an energy investment phase and an energy payoff phase. The energy investment phase happens here in steps one and three, where the ATP is consumed. And then the energy payoff phase is going to be later when we get a net of um, we get a net of two ATP in total because the two that are consumed are replaced by four that are produced. So to summarize, this might show it in a simpler way here. The energy investment phase here we have um, two ATP used, but four ATP are formed for a net gain of 2 ATP. That's a summary of that in terms of the ATP-ADP relationship. But this is not the only form of energy that results from glycolysis. Um, let's talk about the pyruvate and the glucose. Glucose is a form of potential energy. Within that carbon compound are, are chemical bonds that when those bonds are broken, um, electrons can be gained and um, with those electrons are potential energy as well. Because electrons, they're always moving around and that kinetic energy is actually energy of motion. So we're going to actually watch the movement of electrons through the stages of aerobic cellular respiration, ultimately to the final stage where we get that big payout of ATP. So firstly, if we go back to the 10 steps, the glucose is being oxidized along the way here, um, losing electrons in the form of these different compounds. Ultimately, the electrons are going to end up in the molecule called NADH. So where you see here 2NADH, and it's actually this in the energy payoff phase here, 2NAD plus, plus four electrons, plus four 
protons yields two NADH plus two protons. So this molecule NADH carries with it potential energy in the form of the electrons that were gathered from those organic molecules, originally glucose. And what results after the after the electrons are taken is the molecule NADH and then 2 pyruvate from the remainder of the organic compounds. So what is this NAD, NADH, these new things we've never heard of before perhaps? We're going to see these players again, so it's really important that we understand what they are. Um, NAD is an oxidizing agent in cell respiration. So what it means to be an oxidizing agent is that it has the ability to take electrons from another compound. And that's exactly what it does. It gets those electrons from the, the food, if you will, the, the glucose or the derivatives of glucose. Um, and ultimately we get this NADH, which is basically an electron carrier. That's, you know, you don't need to know the chemical structure or this reaction, but I do want you to know that NADH is an electron carrier. Um, and will carry those electrons to the final stage of cellular respiration that happens inside the inner membrane of the mitochondria. You might need to, for understanding terminology for this um, chapter and also for photosynthesis, remember some terms from chemistry, oxidation, reduction, because cellular respiration and photosynthesis are both types of redox reactions involving the movement of electrons between molecules. So one way to remember which, which reactions are giving away electrons and which ones are receiving electrons is through the mnemonic device OIL RIG. OIL stands for oxidation is loss and RIG is reduction is gain. So we're talking about loss and gain of electrons. In this reaction shown here, NAD is going to ultimately gain electrons and be reduced. So this is a reduction reaction here. What was oxidized is the thing that lost the electrons. So glucose was oxidized, NAD is reduced. You're going to have to wrap your head around that, but you'll get more practice with these terms as we continue to study the, the process of cell respiration and then also photosynthesis in our next chapter. Okay, so don't forget that we've got some electrons being carried via NADH to later stages. We will kind of just keep building those electrons up for now, but next we're going to follow the pyruvate into the mitochondria for the next step, pyruvate oxidation. Now, pyruvate oxidation will only happen if oxygen is present. This is why we're modeling right now aerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic meaning with oxygen. And, and you'll see why that is later. You don't see the oxygen yet. <clears throat> In pyruvate oxidation, we end up with, for every one pyruvate, one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A or acetyl CoA. This is an oxidation reaction for pyruvate. So pyruvate is losing electrons. Notice who comes in to get them, NAD again. So NAD is getting reduced by the, by the electrons taken from pyruvate. Ultimately, those electrons are going to be carried by the same type of carrier, NADH. It's going to be a different molecule. Um, you know, there's going to be several of these in the cell. So we've got uh, more electrons coming from NADH. Um, and, and then if we look at the bottom, kind of the fate of what's happening with the carbons, let's take a look at that. Pyruvate is a three carbon compound. Remember that a glucose, which is six carbon, was split into two pyruvates. So, so we have two pyruvates for every glucose. So this actually happens twice. And then each pyruvate loses a carbon and gives off CO2. That's one carbon. Um, that's the only carbon that's lost because acetyl-CoA has two carbon in its structure. So that's where the three carbons end up. One as CO2, two uh, in acetyl-coenzyme A.
Now, acetyl coenzyme A, because it's still an organic compound, still contains potential energy. So this is why we can continue to follow the progression of the organic molecules containing carbon. So let's go ahead and follow that into the matrix of the mitochondria where the citric acid cycle occurs. And I showed you a summary of the citric acid cycle before in our introductory lesson. So let me show you the full on <laughs> version of the citric acid cycle, non abridged here. You might need to know this for perhaps um, studying for the MCAT, but for this class, you don't need to know all the steps and all the intermediaries. The main thing is I want you to know what goes in acetyl CoA and what comes out. Um, well, this is the end of the road for the glucose, what was originally the glucose. What comes out of here are molecules that contain electrons and some byproducts um, and a little bit of ATP. So I want you to focus on what you need to know for this are the things that are in these colored boxes, like CO2, NADH, ATP. And so, in fact, I'm going to streamline it for you. This is what you absolutely need to know for the citric acid cycle. Now, if you're looking at other references when you study cellular respiration, you might also come across the Krebs cycle. These are one and the same. They're referring to the same cycle. Krebs is the name of the scientist that discovered it and had it named after them. <clears throat> so recall that this all started with one molecule of glucose. That glucose got split into two pyruvate. Each pyruvate then um, became oxidized to an acetyl-CoA. So you see here one acetyl-CoA coming in. But so in, in order for this to happen for a whole glucose entering um, the process, this would happen twice. So anything you see here around the cycle, you'd multiply that by two because we're trying to represent what happens for every one glucose that enters the, the um, process of aerobic cellular respiration. So this is why the total energy transferred here on the left in this box is showing two ATP, two FADH2, two, six, sorry, six NADH. We're taking these numbers and multiplying those by two. These are the energy containing molecules. Well, ATP we know is the molecule that can be used to perform work. NADH is an electron carrier, and FADH2 is just another version of an electron carrier. It's kind of like Uber and Lyft that shuttle people. They're just two different brands that, that basically serve the same function, to shuttle electrons. CO2 is a byproduct. Now, with that CO2 given off, there's no more carbon molecules left in the process of cellular respiration. So now it's all about the electrons. So let's take a look at our overall reaction, where we are so far. We've been building up electrons that are ultimately going to end up in that last stage, oxidative phosphorylation, which includes a coupling of two processes, electron transport and chemiosmosis. So I'm going to stop here um, for this lesson because that was a lot to digest. And also, it's a good kind of pausing point because what we've looked at so far is the complete oxidation of glucose, glucose to pyruvate, which was oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A, which was ultimately oxidized to CO2. And now all that's remaining to kind of continue this process to fuel it are those electrons. So in the next lesson, we'll focus on just what's happening with those electrons and how we're going to get that ginormous payout of ATP right here.